Hi, I'm Roxy with Roxy's Broadway Breakdown. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to talk about the upcoming cabaret revival coming this spring in 2024 on Broadway, starring Eddie Redmayne, Gail Rankin, and B.B. Newworth. And why is cabaret such an important show? Why it keeps getting redone over and over again? And I think it's because it is still so socially, culturally, politically relevant. It's based on a 1939 book uh, by Christopher Isherwood called Goodbye to Berlin. It involves a very hedonistic bohemian cabaret singer, Sally Bowles, um, that sings at this cabaret club the Kit Kat Club in 1930s, early 1930s Berlin, right when the Nazi party was starting to come into power. The other main character, the MC, Master of Ceremonies, is homosexual. And um, what he does with his skits, his acts, his jokes, is sort of a metaphor for what's going on outside the Kit Kat Club. It's sort of ironic, he's gay, but he's poking fun at what is not funny, what's going on at that time uh, with the Nazi regime. So you've got these things going on inside this, this little microcosm of the Kit Kat Club, as opposed to what's going on uh, in Germany at that time. And I think all the things that were relevant um, still sort of make statements today that are culturally and and politically relevant today. In 1966, when it was first done on Broadway, people really didn't know how to take it. I mean, it not only dealt with homosexuality, but it dealt with larger, darker topics, um, abortion, and um, just there's, there's other subplots. And... Um, People really didn't know how to take it. And then in 1972, Bob Fosse directed and choreographed the movie. It lost, um, it was nominated for several Oscars and it lost to a little known movie called The Godfather. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, we obviously all know The Godfather. Um, but it, people still, Hollywood still didn't know what to do with this movie. But um, we've obviously made many strides since then. I mean, today, if you think of 2024 and musicals that are being produced on Broadway and all the topics that they tackle and uh, the diversity of actors, um, we really kind of think nothing now of, you know, people in uh, transgender roles and non-binary roles and, you know, the topics of homosexuality and just everything from religion to race to you know just a host of topics and so now maybe cabaret doesn't seem like such a big deal but if you think about it it's still sort of socially relevant because it does still deal with at its core, this idea of us versus them kind of mentality. Not that we're dealing, obviously, with the Nazi regime banging on our door. But it is a very much um, a, a kind of a us versus them, people that are on the fringe, people that aren't like us, and how they were dealt with during the war. Um, there's a very poignant song, Tomorrow Belongs to Me, that always is very jarring in the middle of the show. A young Nazi soldier gets up and sings it, and it's sort of like a call to arms to all the Germans. And it's a very nationalistic song. It's a very much remember us, remember pure blood, remember who we are. And it's very much um, they're not us. And um, I think that when, when you're immersed in the show, the show has been done many, many times in many different ways. When I first saw the show, I saw it in a traditional theater where the action just was up on stage and I felt more like a spectator. 
I've since seen the show many, many times in very many ways in small black box theaters, in cabaret type settings where you actually walk into like a cabaret theater and you sit at chairs and you feel like the actors are in and among you. On Broadway this coming spring, it's going to be even more immersive where the actors themselves are going to greet you. Apparently, even their dressing rooms are going to be open and you can even see them getting ready before the show. And so you're going to be invited into their world. And I think, I'm not sure, but I, I have a feeling that the director sort of has this in mind of if you're really submersed in this Kit Kat Club, and you really feel like you get to know the actors in this two hours of this musical, then you feel like you are part of them. It's Then it becomes, I am one of you, and it's not so easy to just shrug them off after two hours. It's not so much like, oh, that was a nice show, and that was fun, and let's go eat dinner now. It's very much of, oh, that was very dark, and I feel really bad knowing what's going to happen to people like them at the end of the war. And it's sort of a, because we all know what happened to people that were different or people that Germans thought were different or what Nazis thought were different than them at the end of the war. And so I think it's maybe meant to be an eye opener or not letting history repeat itself of this is what happens when you start to think of people as different than you and when you don't start to think of we're all one no matter race ethnicity sexuality religion whatever when you start to divide yourself out into camps and we're not all one and it's us and them then this can this is what can happen and so maybe maybe that's what the director's thinking with a very immersive experience and whoever sees it can leave the theater thinking that's a really bad feeling you know just a division i don't know i don't know it could be it could be i could be totally wrong on that but that's i i would leave the theater feeling that if i had if I was in and around actors and feeling very much a part of them, like I was part of a Kit Kat club for two hours and feeling like one of them, I would feel, I would leave the theater going, oh, I know what's going to happen to them. Um, anyway, I wouldn't feel so separated from and just go, well, that was fun. That was a couple hours at, you know, the Kit Kat club. Anyway. So, I, I, I do feel this show uh, has staying power. I do feel it always is a relevant show. Um, but I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, don't forget to click and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next.